Welcome back to Jigs' Reviews. We've got a posh bottle today. Yes, um, I'll open this get down, I'll pour some in the glass so it breathes a bit and then I'll uh, go on to that. But yeah, so we have got the Glemorangi, I'm gonna get it out, Signet. So I've had this bottle for a, uh, for a little while now. It was actually a gift and um, like most things, it sits with the rest of them and I totally forget I've got it. And I'm like, oh shit, I haven't tried that yet. So yeah, this has been a fucking, this has been a long time coming. So I, um, of course, a very heavy, heavy cork there. Just poured in. Oh, that looks thick. Um, so yes, I'll start by saying Glenmorangie. When I was young, before, you know, you need to grow up a little bit to appreciate things in life, uh, whether it be whiskey or Brussels sprouts. But I um, I never liked whiskey, which I might have said in the previous video, is a case of um, just only trying to say shit, like a, a Bell's or a Jack Daniels, something like that, it's something that's not really of any class, <clears throat> the lower budget ones. And um, I went out somewhere and I think someone was drinking some Glamourangi. I think it was a work thing. I think it was Terry I worked with. He was drinking Glamourangi. I was actually in Scotland as well. And um, it's like, oh, it's delicious. Like, oh, whiskey's fucking gross. I mean, just try it because this is, you know, it's a bit more of a better one. So it was a, it was a 10 year and I drank it and instantly I was like, oh my God, the difference in that is fucking worlds above. So um, that's sort of what started me on my whiskey journey really, like enjoying whiskey more. And it was years before I actually got into it properly, but that was what started it. So Glenmorangie was my first proper decent whiskey that I ever drank. And um, I've always had a soft spot for it ever since really. Um, so this, this little beauty. I, um, as I said, it was a gift, the Signet. So it is, it's 46%. Um, obviously it comes in a lovely box. I think re retail's around £150 if you can find it still. Um, I know some places say it's sold out and that, but I think you can you can still find it, it's here and about. But obviously it comes in a, it comes, I'll say it comes in a lovely ornate box. Like the box has always got like a magnetic, it's quite stiff actually, so yeah, it's a magnetic thing. It's got all the loads of notes and writing and all kinds of shit inside. Um, a masterpiece, 170 years in the making. Um, so yeah. Lovely. But um, if any of you don't know me, I've <laughs> my memory is the fucking best. I do forget shit. So I did actually write down a bit of info about this as it's a bit more of a uh, posher bowl. But yeah, so it's made with two malts. A, um, it's a highly single malt for a start. But it's uh, two malted barleys. It is a single estate barley and a malt, malted chocolate barley. Um, it's been two times distilled in copper pot stills. Uh, American, it was, it's been aged in American oak, virgin oak barrels, and uh, there is actually no age statement on it, but um, from what I read, I think it said it was, um, I think it's from like the rare and oldest, like, drums they got there, I think it was like 35 to 40 years old whiskey, so yes, yeah, it's, it's quite an old, it's quite an old girl, um, I mean, uh, it's got some good legs on it. Not as slow as I thought they'd be, to be fair, but then again, it is, it is 46, it's not overly high, so. But anyway, after having this bottle probably well over a year now, it's about time I fucking probably had a sniff, and more importantly, a taste. Yeah, it's crap, smells like whiskey. <laughs> no. So I'm definitely getting, you know them um, raisins that are covered? You get like chocolate raisins. I'm definitely getting chocolate raisins in there. It's quite bready. I don't know if you ever had a, um, some fruit bread, like you know, like some because I've said if I smell the raisins as well, like a raisiny fruit bread. But yeah, I'm getting 
definitely getting lots of chocolate. It's got a very aged, it has got an aged smell. I'm even getting a bit of, maybe like, it's kind of the smell I got off a Majora Leaf cigar, really. It's definitely a bit of tobacco leaf kind of smell in there. But, it's very sweet, it is very sweet. I suppose if you made yourself a um, an old fashioned cocktail, <clears throat> it's got them like bitters kind of smell in it. Bit of a bit of a, like a, a peel, an orange peel. Oh, it does smell fucking wonderful. All right. It's actually quite. Actually, quite washy. Like it's quite watery. I thought it'd be thicker. I'm getting the bitters taste come through as well. It is a bit like an old fashioned. There is the bitters there. There is the orange peel in there as well. chocolate orangey if you know what I mean you do get the chocolate come through in the taste but not as much as you would as I did in the nose mm. getting some no I, I love dates I love eating dates and I tend to get them, I think they're medjool dates, I think I get they're like they're thicker and they're a bit they're sweeter and chewier. I'm getting a bit of that in there. Mmm. Oh, this is slight fresh coffee bean. As it starts to finish, it starts getting, the sweetness dies off a little bit and you start getting a bit more of the earthy taste. It's got, it's, it's some, there's something coffee beany about it. I know you can smell them fresh where they're sitting in top, sit at the top before you grind them down. Mm. Now I'm getting a lot more of that orange peel as well. It does finish quite slowly, it doesn't just disappear, but it doesn't really, really last, but it just slowly <whistles> floats away. It is good, it is nice. I don't know if it's 150 pound nice. I think if I brought it myself, I might be thinking, oh, I might have spent a bit too much money on that. As it was a gift, it's not as, it's not as painful to deal with. But it is, it, but take it, I'm just going, I'm just going by my opinion of if I brought it myself, I might have been a bit, mm, I'd want it to be a bit, a bit more than what it is if I had done. But it is really nice. Get a bit of pepperiness coming through now as well. Mm. All in all, it is good. It is nice. It's a lovely looking package. I think they said it was called Signet. It's, it's called Signet because there's something to do with this pan. I think it's from like some old stone relic or something. Um, I think it's like a thousand or thousand two hundred years old relic or something. I'm assuming it's probably in Scotland somewhere. But yeah, hmm. it's fucking hefty as well. It's one hefty bottle. Yeah, the, the box is the intro with this fucking box. So yeah, it looks lovely, but it doesn't fucking fit anywhere. Literally have to fucking lie it down in the cupboard. But um, 
Yeah, all the bottle all slots in nicely. If you can get the fucker back in again. Oh god. Stand up and do it. There you go, yeah, it's worked there. Mask is a bit of a bobble in soon. What else is it saying here? Highland stone of Providence. Beside the ancient Hilton of Cadbold stone, that's what it is. Symbolises the precious gift of nature that continues to flow in our whiskey. Alright, fair enough. Uh, Cadbold barley, American white oak said about the uh, about the casking. But yeah, hmm. So a very nice gift if you want to splash out and get some on that. But yeah, so that is the Glamorangi Signet. Like I said. Some good, good flavours in there, good notes, but <sighs> are you going to spend that money on it? Depends if you're a collector, depends if that's what you're going to do. It is very nice, but I've had things which I personally think have got more to them and they're probably half the price of that. But, you know, it was still a nice drum. Anyway, cheers. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, website is www.jigsviewsandreviews.com. I have a Patreon, Teesprings, all that malarkey. So yeah, head over there and do the thing. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again.